we are talking about the production of x-rays and if you're taking the American Board of Radiology exam this concept is going to be very important for you to know. Characteristic x-ray production is one of the interactions that happens aside from Bremschelon. It happens in a lower percentage when you can compare it to Bremschelon but it is perhaps more important for imaging because it happens at discrete energy levels and what you're seeing in the diagram here is that we're bombarding the target in this case we're going to say this is a tungsten target with electrons and those electrons are hitting the K shell electron if you have enough energy this K shell electron is going to be ejected from this K shell orbital and the electron from the L shell is going to come down and replace, fill that gap. When that happens, the energy difference between the K shell and the L shell creates what is known as a characteristic X-ray. And that's exactly the difference between the K and the L shell, and that's why it's known as the characteristic X-ray. It is specific to the type of target that you're using, and that's very important for imaging in radiology. We also must know that the higher your atomic number for the element and the higher the energy, the KVP, the more chances of X-ray interactions you will have. And that goes for both Bremschelon and characteristic X-rays. That being said, if we really take the example of tungsten, we know that it's binding energy is around 69.5 so that means that 69.5 keV so that means that our electrons must have that energy or a little bit more in order to be able to eject the K shell electrons and therefore producing characteristic radiation have in mind that you're bombarding with an electron you eject another electron but the energy that you really care about is a photon energy or the, the characteristic x-ray is a photon that you're emitting and that's what you're going to use for a lot of your imaging spectrum. That being said, we must also recognize that if we don't meet the energy level to eject the K-shell, we need to increase our KVP so that we produce higher energy electrons. If we change MAS or MAs, we're not going to really affect the maximum energy of our beam. And when we increase KVP, we know that we're increasing maximum energy, average energy, Bremschelon, and characteristic X-rays interactions like we mentioned. We also know that the minimum energy is not affected because we're only changing the maximum and the average. We do have x-rays that are more penetrating now, and that's important for imaging. So the higher KVP, the more penetrating the x-ray. However, the energy from characteristic x-rays is not going to change because it really is the difference between two orbitals, whether that's K and L or L and M. Those x-rays are going to have characteristic energies. The reason we don't talk that much about the L and M shells are because their interaction for creating characteristic x-rays produces much lower energy characteristic x-rays. So that peak is really buried within the Bremschelon uh, slope in the, if you look for a typical x-ray spectrum. So that one doesn't really help us that much because it, it's really within the Bremschelon range. And even Bremschelon x-rays can actually be of this discrete energy level which in tungsten is from 57 to 59 or 67 to 69 so it has really two peaks and Bremschelon can produce x-rays at these peaks but it's, it's just a matter of how many x-rays is going to produce at this peak so at Bremschelon really most of the x-rays from Bremschelon at a, at a lower energies but they do produce higher energy x-rays and that's something to, to have in mind. So this is a very short video, but there are a lot of very important concepts. So 
feel free to review it again and drop any questions. I'll try to look for a typical x-ray spectrum and, and we can discuss that further. But for now, just focus that 99% of your x-ray of your uh, during your x-ray production is going to go to heat. 1% goes to x-ray interaction. From that 1%, 85% goes to bremsholong and the remaining percentage goes to characteristic x-ray generation.